Tonight, despite concerns with overcrowding on beaches, the premier vows not to wade in. We just make sure to keep our distance and stay within our bubble and enjoy outside as well. How officials are relying on people to stay apart to stay COVID safe, especially as we head into a weekend with more unbearably hot weather. I was shocked, I was angry, I was sad. Um, it was traumatic. Another allegation of a racist attack in Toronto. Uber responds after one of its drivers allegedly calls a passenger the N-word. <laughs> Don't you cry. And after her dream wedding was thrown off course, the heartwarming story of a community rallying behind a soon-to-be bride. Good evening, I'm Chris Glover. We begin tonight with a shooting downtown that left a man in life-threatening condition. The suspect is still at large. Police were called to the scene near Spadina and Dundas just after 6.30 tonight for reports of multiple shots fired. Officers found a man in his late 20s suffering from a gunshot wound. He was rushed to the hospital with critical injuries. There was a heavy police presence in the area tonight as officers canvassed the scene for witnesses. They have released a description of the suspect. He is described as a black man, 30 to 35 years old, six foot two, 180 pounds with a short black afro and a black goatee, wearing a black tracksuit with white stripes and white runners. Anyone with information is urged to contact police. As several municipalities grapple with overcrowding on beaches, Ontario's premier says he will not order them to close, even as some fear they could lead to a spike in COVID cases. Kelda Yoon is live for us tonight at Woodbine Beach. And Kelda, let's start with why the premier is not stepping in. Well, Chris, the premier says that he is relying on people to use their common sense when it comes to spending time on beaches like this one, Woodbine Beach. And uh, right now it is quite late, but still quite lively. However, not too crowded. And I was here even earlier around five o'clock and even then it wasn't uh, too crowded. Busy, but not crowded. Uh, but in recent days, several Toronto beaches has seen have seen overcrowding, including this one, Woodbine Beach. And that's why there are some of these concerns. It was the perfect day to spend on the beach. The Brace Irwin family were among the beachgoers enjoying the sun and surf this afternoon at Woodbine Beach. I like to play with the sand a lot. Chloe, tell them about the deep freeze. Uh, the water is really cold, so we go like under. And while it was quite busy, it wasn't overly crowded. We're still keeping our distance though. Most groups were. Has it been hard to keep your distance today? No, not today, no. People are usually pretty aware of their surroundings, so it's been pretty easy. And that's a far cry from Canada Day and weekends past. It's yeah. usually been festive with people. That's the worry that come this weekend, beaches like this one will again get overcrowded. But Doug Ford today simply urged people to use their common sense. Find another place uh, if it's jam-packed. You know, I, I, I wouldn't go to a jam-packed beach. Find a more secluded beach. Jeanette Donaghy lives in the neighborhood across from Woodbine Beach. People really need to be cautious um, about their surroundings, and I don't think much of that was going on on Sunday. But, you know, I, it's important that we try and get back to a new normal, whatever that may be. But pros and cons. But there's, there are, there are pros and cons. Hot dog vendor Belint Usain is glad beaches are staying open. Are we trying to survive? And speaking with many beachgoers here today, it appears the Premier's calls for common sense are being answered. We didn't know what we were going to expect, so if it was really, really busy and it didn't look safe, we probably wouldn't have stayed long. But yeah, we all felt safe, so absolutely enjoy it. If it got super crowded, do you think you would, would you leave? Yeah, I would leave because like, I'm not trying to get COVID. <laughs> 
Uh, well, Whitbine Beach, as well as most Toronto beaches, uh, most beaches in the province actually will continue to operate without restrictions. That is not the case for Wasaga Beach. Now, the mayor of Wasaga Beach, Nina Bifolci, uh, she called out the premier earlier this week, uh, calling him out for the mismanagement of the reopening of Wasaga Beach, uh, saying that it led to reckless overcrowding. So, as a result of that, uh, she has announced that the sand covered portion of Beach Drive will close beginning on July 9th, as well as beachfront parking spots. That will now be limited to 50% capacity. Chris. Thanks for this tonight, Kelda. Another stinking hot day out there, and Nick Cernkovich tells me it is not going to let up anytime soon. Hey, Nick? Hey, no, absolutely, uh, Chris. Actually, I was looking at the long-range forecast, and I kind of teased this before the break, but there is really no let up in these hot temperatures. And when I say that, I mean temperatures over 30 until almost mid-July. And then after that, we'll have to see how the forecast plays out. But that is one of our big headlines uh, as we look toward the future here. Heat warning, of course, in effect still. Lots of sunshine in the forecast in this prolonged heat wave expected to last, I think, probably close to the mid-July, and then we'll have to see after that. Now, to put it in perspective, average daytime highs for this time of year, about 26 degrees, lows about 14. And you'll see how that stacks up in the long-range forecast in just a sec. I mentioned the heat warnings off the top there. There are heat warnings that persist, and I expect those to last right into next week. Uh, temperatures today hitting about 32 degrees in the city of Toronto with the humid X feeling like 39 and there's a lot more of that as we head through uh, the next five days and as I said off the top there even into about mid uh, July now uh, really no precipitation to speak of um, we've seen a few spotty showers uh, through the evening today uh, pop up around the GTA or outside the GTA but otherwise we're looking at sunshine heading into tomorrow sunshine through Sunday as well and that basically lasts until sort of Tuesday, Wednesday. And that's where I think our first chance of seeing some real sort of uh, decent afternoon thunderstorms uh, forming across the GTA. But other than that, we're looking at some pretty dry weather as well heading into the forecast. Speaking of the forecast, uh, southwestern Ontario tonight, temperatures at uh, minus, <laughs> minus, where's my head, 21 degrees, plus 21 degrees. And uh, as we head through tomorrow afternoon, uh, 32 degrees in the forecast, slightly less humidity with the north Northerly wind, but that won't last as well. We're going to start pumping in more humidity as we head through the next few days. 21 degrees uh, through the overnight across the uh, Golden Horseshoe. Tomorrow, 31 is a high. Humidex again of 36 with a bit of a northerly breeze, but that northerly breeze shifts to a westerly or southwesterly breeze as we head through Sunday and humidex values start to uh, rise. So there's a look at your five day forecast and 31 degrees on Saturday, 32 on Sunday, uh, Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday progressively hotter. It looks like we may see some afternoon showers or thunderstorms as we head through Wednesday, but Humidex values Tuesday, Wednesday in excess of 40. Wow. Yes. Yeah, no minuses in that forecast. No minuses, I know. I, <laughs> I don't know if I was thinking of air conditioning or my head was just somewhere else. It, anyway. It looks good if you like the heat. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. You bet. The weather is brought to you by Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. We test, so it runs. It's hard to stop a train. Ontario has issued an order that will make it easier for bars and restaurants to expand their patios. Right now, they can only serve customers outdoors. The change allows municipalities to quickly pass temporary bylaws for new and expanded patios. Ontario also amended another order to clarify that outdoor dining areas can open even if they are covered. But the order states at least two sides of a covered dining area have to be open to the outside. A King Street nightclub may now lose its liquor license after being charged for allegedly holding a large indoor party last week. Goldie Nightclub has been charged with failure to comply with an order made during a declared emergency after allegedly letting up to 150 people into the club with no physical distancing measures in place. Ontario's Alcohol and Gaming Commission said they've suspended the club's liquor license and put forth a proposal to revoke the license completely. The club said it is conducting its own internal investigation and will hold those accountable if necessary. Now to the ongoing tow truck turf war in Toronto. Another fire broke out at a North York tow truck lot for the second time in two days. 
this is really a continuation of the same event to some extent. It's, it appears that someone has returned to the scene and set fire to what was left from uh, Tuesday morning's fire. It happened at a lot near Finch and Dufferin. The blaze started early this morning around 2.30, less than 72 hours after multiple trucks were set on fire there on Tuesday. This comes days after the province announced a task force to examine ways to reform the tow truck industry. At least two police forces are conducting major investigations linked to tow truck operations after reports of organized crime and violence linked to the industry. Uber has cut ties with one of its drivers after the man allegedly called a woman the N-word during a seemingly minor dispute with a customer. John Lancaster has this story. Aisha Fairclough says she was called the N-word yesterday by an Uber driver. She says the driver quickly became agitated after being asked to move his passenger seat forward so Fairclough could get more leg room. The ride, she says, started and ended badly. Uh, my partner exited the vehicle and I said, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say thank you. This was a terrible ride. He turned around and said, effing N-word, get out of the car. When confronted about the slur, she says the driver claimed he didn't say it. Fairclough's partner, NDP MPP Jill Andrews, says she had already stepped out of the car when the exchange happened. I did not hear the words myself. However, I saw her face. I, I looked back and she looked as though, you know, a boulder had fallen on her. Fairclough snapped a picture of the driver and his license plate and reported the incident to Uber. CBC News was unable to reach the driver. In a statement to CBC News, the company said, what has been reported is deeply upsetting and something no person should experience. Discrimination has no place on the Uber app or anywhere. I was shocked, I was angry, I was sad. Um, it was traumatic. This isn't something that anybody deserves under any circumstances. Fairclough says the company needs better anti-black racism policies and training to help ensure something like this doesn't happen again. John Lancaster, CBC News, Toronto. A group of anti-racism protesters have now been issued a trespass order after camping out in front of City Hall for the past two weeks. The city is giving them three days to remove their tents and generators or face fines and possible arrest. But as Greg Ross reports tonight, despite the warnings, many of the protesters say they are not going anywhere. They will have to be dragging me away in cuffs to get me off here by Monday night. This man says a trespass notice issued by the city today is only proof that their demonstration against anti-black, anti-indigenous and anti-brown racism is working. At the very least, we do know that we are a burden on them. We are pressuring them, which is why they have been pushing that forward to get us removed. They've been there since June the 19th. Um, we feel it is now time. City spokesperson Brad Ross says protesters who have been camping in Nathan Phillips Square for two weeks now are being asked to pack up and go. This morning, uh, we provided them with a notice of trespass, uh, which essentially says that um, they have uh, to immediately uh, pack the tents, cease uh, the use of open flames, use of generators, marking up the square, uh, and, to, uh, and to do so immediately uh, or no later than this Monday, July 6th. The city says this protest is also impeding on other events that have been planned for the square, like a farmer's market scheduled for July 8th, two days after the city says these tents and protesters have to be gone. They can be on the square to protest. Uh, we, we absolutely uh, respect that right. Uh, it is a public square. Uh, the entire public, though, has a right to, to access that square. And uh, we have events that are coming up that are uh, scheduled for Nathan Phillips Square. The city says there will be services made available for any protesters who are homeless and have nowhere else to go. They hope the rest of the protesters leave peacefully. A lot of people who came here were co con committed, right? They didn't want to leave and they're not going to leave and it's not going to be an easy thing. Brad Ross from the city telling us today that they do have legal options if these protesters refuse to comply. They can come in here on Monday with bylaw officers and police officers and protesters could face arrest and fines of up to $10,000 for trespassing. 
Greg Ross, CBC News, Toronto. After more than two months, the Canadian Armed Forces will leave Ontario long-term care homes today. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping us out through this very difficult time. And the goal is, is to come up with uh, solutions to make sure this never happens again. Premier Doug Ford asked for help from the Armed Forces in late April to deal with COVID-19 infection control and resident care at several homes. In May, they released a disturbing report outlining the negligence in some long-term care homes, including insect infestations and poor hygiene practices. The Ontario government says they've begun to address these issues. Currently, just over 40 homes in the province are experiencing a COVID-19 outbreak. An independent commission will begin looking into Ontario's long-term care system later this month. As businesses have to keep adapting to new phases of reopening and new restrictions, a website has just launched, making it easier for you to support local business. I'm Angelina King and Ronson Spales. I'll have more on that and take you on a little shopping trip. That's coming up.
Welcome back. As things continue to reopen and businesses keep adapting to stay afloat, a new website is making it easier for people to shop local. And with marketing budgets virtually non-existent, it's all free for businesses. Angelina King spoke to business owners about how the new website will help them. There's an emotional side to it, so a lot of sleepless nights. Adjusting to the new challenges of space orienting and um, and keeping everything safe and clean. Trying to find new customers is definitely tricky right now. That's why Localhood launched last week, a website to give local businesses more exposure while making it easier for you to know what they're offering. So Localhood is a website where locals like you and I can discover and share stories about all the local businesses that we love and want to support. So it's really easy, you just go to localhood.com slash Toronto and you'll see at the top they have categories like delivery, pickup, black owned businesses, restaurants, retail. So when you click on one of the categories, it will sort all of the stories that belong to that category. And what's unique is that on the story, you can just swipe up and a local can go straight to your online store. So let's say you're like me, you're out shopping today, you need some dessert for later tonight, maybe a gift for your nephew, for example, as well as some groceries. Hello, the Mercantile. We don't sell online, so it was taking phone calls and we would literally shop through the store with you. So do you want a red sauce or Now I just need to grab some dessert for my dinner tonight. Let's see if there's a bakery close by. Perfect, this one's two blocks away. Thank you. Oh, it means, it means everything. It's meant that I've been able to keep four staff employed full time. For that, I'm so grateful. I just have one more stop, I have to grab a gift. And it looks like they're just doing curbside pickup or appointment. I'll call to see if I can get in. Hi, I just called, I have an appointment. Hi there, Thank you. Sure. platform that encourages shopping locally is amazing. I think that small businesses are so important for the economy and just for creating you know, a colorful cityscape. Localhood is working on expanding to other cities as well as tailoring the site to your specific location, making it even easier to support local business. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, why a bride-to-be and frontline hero is being rewarded with a dream wedding dress. We thought, why can't we give a gown away? And so we did that and decided it would be a frontline heroes because people have done so much. Even when I was reading the nominations, I had a smile on my face. So she must do that to other people. <laughs>
Many couples have had to put their weddings on hold because of the COVID-19 pandemic, postponing ceremonies and drawing up new plans. But thanks to some friends, co-workers and a generous bridal shop, one bride and frontline worker can tick a special to-do off her list, her dream dress. Ali Chiasson has that story. Bliss Bridal has been outfitting brides for more than 15 years. Their clients are loyal and royally stressed out if they had a wedding planned for this year. So the boutique owner decided to play fairy godmother. Why can't we give a gown away? And so we did that and decided it would be a frontline heroes because people have done so much. It was a social media contest and so people nominated their frontline hero and their frontline worker and we started to get some incredible stories. The clear front runner was this bride-to-be, Melissa Knowles. A ton of people nominated her, over a dozen people nominated her family, friends, co-workers, I believe. When I was reading the nominations, I had a smile on my face. So she must do that to other people. She works in the bakery department of a Whitby grocery store and is known for going above and beyond. Some people want extra decorations, like want you to draw a rainbow or a motorcycle or want something inappropriate written on it, kind of thing for a bachelor party or a birthday, so. You can do that. Secretly, yes, like as long as it's in a box and no one else sees it, it's totally fine. So, I love that. yeah. <laughs> but really, there's more to it. Ask her mother and soon to be mother in law. <laughs> Don't you cry. Melissa's fiance Matt was in a terrible car crash two years ago. A driver ran a red light and T boned him, flipping his truck. He suffered broken bones and a fractured spine. Very hardworking young man, uh, had a lot of goals dreams and, and they were cut short due to his accident. His soon-to-be fiance became his caregiver and breadwinner. They haven't even said the rows yet um, through sickness and in health and she's, sure. she's stuck by and she's still here. Melissa gets emotional talking about Matt so we kept it light. I think he's dreamy. Um, and he's a lot of fun, always making me laugh. Proposed at Disney, so he's a bit of a Prince Charming. I guess kind of. Today is a light at the end of the tunnel type of day for this family. Her dream dress and alterations paid for. And we are not about to spoil this bride's big dress reveal, but here's a hint. Magical. We can't wait. Yeah. She'll look like Cinderella. Yeah, we can't wait. Ali Shias on CBC News, Whitby. What a beautiful story. Love that one. And that is our show for you tonight and for the, for the week. Remember, you can get caught up on the day's news anytime. Head to our website, cbc.ca slash Toronto. Have a great night.